I am Sam Otten, and with me is Jason Book, writer and artist of meandhimcomic.tumblr.com. Hey, Jason, how you doing? Hey, I'm good, Sam. How are you? I'm not too bad. I'm always excited to talk about Batman v Superman. I'm loving this movie <laughs> more and more the more that I think about it and talk about it. But, um, you know, this movie is pretty divisive. A lot of people are actually giving it kind of negative reviews. I don't quite understand it. Um, I think there's so much depth and good stuff in this movie. But we are, to be fair, we are going to give a list of things that we thought could have been improved. So we're going to give our top five things that maybe could have been better about Batman v Superman, even though we liked the movies overall. Mm -hmm. So, Jason, we'll start with you and uh, your number five. Yeah, for me, um, I'll go chronologically just from the beginning of the movie. Um, I don't think we needed to see Batman's origin on film again. We've seen it so many times because it's been done so many times. I understand in the movie we needed to get some, oh, wait, his mom's name is Martha, Clark's mom's name is Martha kind of moment, but it could have been handled differently. So I, for me personally, I didn't need to see that again. Hmm. Yeah, I think that's fair for you. Um, for me, I liked seeing it because it was during the opening credits, you know, so it's kind of like it's it wasn't like a full scene. It was the credit scene. But I liked it because this way in the Justice League universe, this universe of films, we have the death of the Waynes, which is very important mm. for Batman. Um, and I liked how, how Zack Snyder and Larry Fong shot it. I thought it was beautiful, um, just mm. the shots that they had, the pearls, the gun with the pearls. Um, and I wondered even if the Martha line when Jonathan was dying and they went close up on his lips, I wondered if that was even an homage to Citizen Kane. <laughs> go close up to Kane. Yeah, for Rosebud, <laughs> last words. That's funny. Um, so for me, I liked it. But one thing that I had that's also related to maybe kind of Act 1 and the parents... I thought maybe they could have had a, an additional Martha Kent scene mm -hmm. um, because, you know, w she becomes very important at the end. We want to have emotional attachment to her when she's kidnapped, but we really only had one scene to set up that emotional attachment. For me, it was okay because Man of Steel, I got really attached to her relationship with Clark and I cared about her a lot from Man of Steel. Yeah. But in this movie, maybe they should have set that up with one additional scene and then paid it off later when she gets kidnapped. Yeah, I agree. Like, there's so much going on in this movie. Some of the things we're going to talk about are things that gets glossed over. And they could say, well, the extended version and this, that. But the movie was long enough to me already. It was a good mm -hmm. running time. So when you have this many characters, somebody's going to end up getting the short stick. And I think in some ways she is one of those characters in this movie and possibly maybe Perry as well. Mm -hmm. What's up next for you? Uh, next up for me is the handling of Jimmy Olsen. So, you know, if this was, you know, 20 years ago, and we're not seeing stuff on the internet, we wouldn't even know that Jimmy Olsen was supposed to be in that uh, scene in Africa um, with Lois Lane. But mm -hmm. the internet told us it was, and Zack Snyder said it was. And to me, it was like a kind of a, a spit in the face to Superman fans, because not only was Jimmy Olsen not really in the movie, then when they put him in there, they decided to ha kill him off within two seconds of him being on screen. So... Just as a Superman fan, I thought it was, you know, kind of weak. Yeah, um, I, I sort of agree with you. Um, I think, you know, it might be something where James Olsen is a very major character on the Supergirl TV show. So I wondered if, like, they weren't going to make him a big thing in the movies because he's big on TV. Mm. Or if, if you're a big Jimmy Olsen fan and you're trying to hold out some hope, Maybe that was the CIA agent who was taking the identity of Jimmy Olsen, and maybe hey, there's a real, there you go. <laughs> maybe there's a Jimmy Olsen who's really just a photographer somewhere else. <laughs> maybe we'll get the signal watch sometime. I'm surprised, honestly, for this movie universe, I really thought they were going to throw it on its head and have Jimmy Olsen be a girl. But mm -hmm. as I said to you before, I can't remember if it was on the last episode or off air, probably what it was is they realized that so much of the stuff that Jimmy does in the comic could be replaced by the same things that Lois is doing as a reporter. So they figured it would yeah. just be redundant, I think. Yeah, and it also might mean that they don't have a Superman standalone planned for the next few years. Yeah. Because that's the only place where I could see fitting in Jimmy would be a Superman standalone movie. I don't think mm. he can fit into Justice League and stuff like that. So. Yeah, no doubt. Unless he was the guy that like took the first photo of the Justice League together or something like that. Yeah. <laughs> All right, next up for me um, is kind of related to Daily Planet is... I did wish that there was one more scene of Clark Kent as a reporter investigating Batman. Yeah. So they had a couple scenes that they definitely showed us that Clark Kent was interested in Batman and that he kind of disagreed with the way that Batman was handling himself. Mm -hmm. um, but I would have liked to see Clark maybe out in the field uh, doing some investigations of Batman. Mm. I believe that they filmed something where Clark Kent is going in Gotham and talking to some people in Gotham. Um, maybe it'll be on the ultimate cut. 
Yeah, I, same for me. I'd like to see something like that, or even just the way he actually figures out, besides what's implied in the movie, who Batman is and vice mm-hmm. versa, because that's such a classic um, thing from the comics and from the animated series and whatnot. Yeah. Uh, next up for me is, even though it's supposed to be, I think it's like a future scene where Batman has that vision of the Flash mm-hmm. coming um, and warning him about something going on. I didn't love that costume. I didn't like the way Ezra Miller looked in it. Uh, he had like a, a, it looked like a young kid trying to grow a mustache through that costume. And I understand <laughs> they were going for something different, but because I've said this a million times and I stand by it, when you've got one of the best superhero shows on TV right now, The Flash, the bar is set pretty high for this character, so I, I know they're trying to do something different, but I didn't love that scene, and I'm hoping that I get something that looks a lot cooler in The Flash and Justice League movie. Yeah. Um, I, I think Ezra Miller, I, I'm, I think he could be pretty good, um, but I agree with you that that costume, I'm kind of hoping that that costume is maybe a time travel costume and not his like totally legit costume. Yeah, totally. Let's, but, let's hope, right? Um, for me... A very small thing, because um, this might be a plot hole, but I'm not sure, but Lois figures out that Lex knows Superman's identity. I feel like Lois should have immediately tried to like signal to Martha, just be careful, somebody kind of evil or somebody that's yeah. not too good knows about Superman's identity, and Martha would be the one person that you'd want to warn, because that's the other person that's connected to Clark Kent. Yeah. So if I was a real character in that moment, I would have immediately been worried for Clark's mom. Yeah, and there's no excuse in this digital day and age that she wouldn't have had time to even text her or something like that. Right. Yeah. Now, it's maybe not a full plot hole because maybe she did text Martha, but Martha was still like, well, I'm still going to go to work. I'm not going to like lock myself up. Yeah, that's true. But, you know, um, I just, I kind of got the feeling that Martha was totally, you know, cut unaware. Mm-hmm. So. Yeah. What do you have? Uh, next up for me, it's kind of a big one, but I mean, it's not shown a lot, but it's implied a lot. In this movie, to me, Batman kills too much. Like, he's a little bit nonchalant about it, whether it's with the guns from the uh, the bat plane and things like that. I like that in the comics and other renditions of Batman, Batman will only kill when it's absolutely the last resort. Kind of similar to in Man of Steel, where Superman killed Zod because the, he wouldn't give up. And he was going to mm-hmm. kill people. So that, you know, it's not a huge thing, but I didn't like that because Batman was already dark enough in this movie. And you could argue and say, yeah, it does go with the depiction from it. And Dark Knight Returns was like that. But to me, I like my Batman to have a little more of a moral kind of mm-hmm. code on the killing thing. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and I think a lot of people have a similar kind of feeling as you do about that. For me, it didn't bother me because I feel like they were trying to tell this story of Batman kind of losing it and going over the edge and so i think to show that he was over the edge was actually that he's now killing and i think that the batman earlier in his career would not have done that Mm -hmm. and i think batman after this will not do that because superman has redeemed batman and batman's kind of come back you know to the the right side of things yeah um so i'm thinking this is maybe this temporary phase in batman's life where he was in this dark place and he was doing this stuff that was kind of uncharacteristic Mm -hmm. um also just like for a little clarification like were you okay with the kind of he hit the guy, and the guy dropped the grenade, and then, you know, the grenade ended up kind of killing him, but it was sort of, you know, Batman didn't throw the grenade at him. Batman just kind of knocked him. Well, and that one's the okay, but I think in the okay. same scene, like, he actually takes the gun away from some of the thugs and shoots them. Mm-hmm. You know, he may not have supposed to be hitting them, but he kind of shoots around while he's kicking and stuff, and mm-hmm. that's a little too straight bullet for Batman, you know what I mean? But okay. it, I see what you're saying. It does work with this depiction of the character because he definitely is over the edge right for me another one that i had um was just a minor nitpick about um when wonder woman opens the files to see the justice leaguers Mm. i actually really liked the way that that happened i liked lex investigating the metahumans i liked wonder woman seeing them including herself Mm -hmm. um but I think that that scene actually should have been a few minutes earlier and the reason i say that was because if i'm remembering correctly Superman literally was just flying off to go to the bat signal to have his throwdown with Batman. And while Superman is in flight on the way, that's when we see Wonder Woman opening these files and we get to see each of the little glimpses of the Justice Leaguers. Uh, I felt like that took away the momentum a little bit. Like, I feel like once Superman is literally going to see Batman, we shouldn't have anything interrupt us. We should kind of go to that Batman fight. Yeah, I think so. that was probably an editing choice. They could have just put it in a different spot in the movie. Right, Because exactly. the scene didn't work, work really well, but maybe not mm-hmm. the placement of it. 
Exactly. I feel like it's a very simple fix where they, I mean, maybe it's easier said than done, but I feel like it should have just been a little bit earlier. But maybe there isn't a better place to put it, but my sense was I wanted to just follow Superman to Batman's fight. I didn't want this other, even yeah. though I really liked it, I didn't want it getting in the way. They were probably trying to hold that as much as possible because they wanted that reveal like a surprise later in the movie, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. All right, do you have one more on your list? Yeah, my last one, I have no complaints with how it was handled film-wise and, and directing-wise and acting-wise, and it worked well for the movie, but I feel that two movies into a shared DC universe, it's too soon for the death of Superman um, and Doomsday slash Ark. I think maybe this could have worked better in between Justice League 1 and 2, because then you would have had, like, oh, Superman is gone, and he was the guy that, like, started this whole thing, you know, and now we have to deal without him. We have to get more guys on the team or something, but maybe we'll still get that anyways. But I just found that there was so much going on in the movie already. I would have been okay without it, um, but it does work for the movie that we ended up getting, and I have no complaints about how it was handled, but I just think the, the fanboy in me is like, yeah, that's a little too soon. So before I saw the movie, I would have totally agreed with you, and I even said this to you, you know, when we were getting ready for the movie, that I hope they don't kill Superman because it's only the second movie. Yeah. Um, but once I saw the movie, I was all in on the death of Superman. And I love Superman, but I feel like his death had a lot of meaning. I, th I feel sure. like his his death inspired Wonder Woman uh, to come back and join the Justice League. His death inspired Batman to get right back on the good side of things. And Superman's death leaves the world unprotected. And Batman now realizes, like, oh, we are unprotected. Superman actually was a nice protector for us. <laughs> And there's maybe some, you know, apocalypse type doom uh, lurking in the future. So Batman now, I think, is realizing with Superman gone, we need to get these other people together to try to do the best Superman impression that we can because Superman's not here to protect us. Yeah. So I feel like his death had a lot of meaning. And I feel like Doomsday was a good choice for this um, movie in terms of just the brawn of the villain sure. because doomsday does not have a full three-dimensional character no and i thought that was perfect for this movie because this was really humanity dealing with superman and it was lex's issue and it was batman's issue and so lex was really this villain and actually batman was kind of the villain but batman gets redeemed and lex does not get redeemed mm -hmm. but because they were the villain we didn't also need another villain that was three-dimensional and complicated. I think it was better to just have Doomsday that's really just a tool of Lex. Yeah, it so, did work well. It's just, yeah. part of me was like, it's just too soon, and there was already enough going on in the movie. But, I mean, it, as far as the next movie goes, what the payoff is, I, I may change my mind on that. It depends how things play out from here on in. Yeah, and see, for me, I changed my mind when I saw this one happening. I'm like, wow, that like to me, it was such a great use of Superman's death that I was all for it. Um, so, and and even to get humanity around, right? Like Superman's yeah. death was when humanity might actually finally realize, like, oh, let's all quit nitpicking him and second guessing him, and including the real fans, I would say, sure. not just the ones in the movie, but like, let's actually get behind Superman. Part of it for me too is that it's the it's a big storyline in the history of Superman. It kind of got oh, the sure, character yeah. popular again, and I mm -hmm. didn't want to see it rushed through as well, you know. Yeah, I mean, I think it's legitimate concerns, and I had those same concerns. Yeah. Um, but for me, I can definitely see what they were going with it, and I'm okay with it, um, seeing how it played out. Yeah, I mean, definitely when the movie was over, I wasn't like, oh, that's too bad. I was pretty pretty satisfied, especially with the final scene when we see what's happening already. So, mm -hmm. But yeah, overall, they did a good job with it, and I, I still think the reviews are kind of hilarious. Like, It is a real entertaining time at the movies. It's not the best superhero movie ever, but it's definitely not the worst either, and it's a lot of fun, you know? Mm -hmm. Yeah, which actually comes back to mine. Uh, for my last entry, I actually do not have one because <laughs> I loved this movie and I had to rack my brains to come up with these four and I don't have a fifth complaint or a fifth thing that they should change about this movie yet. Um, so, yeah, for me, I agree with you. The, the reviews have been pretty harsh. For me, a movie that's very deep, has great visuals, has great action, has really great characters... Um, so for me, I enjoyed it. Here are a few things that they maybe could have improved on, you know, with some fine tuning. Yeah, exactly. Here's the last one. Um, mm -hmm. We have to wait how many years to see what happens next. There we go. There, there's yeah. a minor complaint. <laughs> <laughs> sure. Yeah, right. I know. I know. I was ready for Justice League as soon as this one finished. I wanted them to just put Justice League on. <laughs> When's the release date for that? Anyways, part one. That one's in uh, summer of 2017. Uh, late summer or fall of 2017. It's not bad. Let's hope it doesn't get pushed back like this one did too. 